much everyone for joining us here for this pre-match press conference. We're joined by Namibia coach Pierre De Bruyne ahead of their game tomorrow um, against India in Dubai. Thanks very much for joining us, Pierre. Um, as you will all already know, we are running these press conferences in hybrid fashion, meaning um, we are running some in person and some exclusively via Zoom, such as this one. So I would just ask for everyone to remain on mute and turn their videos off, please, throughout the duration, unless you are selected to ask a question. If you do have a question, please, can you put your hand up by clicking on the reactions button at the bottom of your Zoom screen? So um, I can see we already have a couple of questions. So I will go to Anuj Mishra, please, for your question. Anna, are you there? Okay, we'll move to uh, to Niharikan Raina, please. Uh, hi, Coach uh, Niharika, this side. Uh, my question for you is: uh, How do you sum up Namibia's journey in Super Twelve of the tournament, and also how much is the team excited for playing against India tomorrow in Dubai? Thank you for your question. Um, yeah, if I can summarize it very quickly, it's it's been an amazing journey. It's been look an emotional roller coaster for for all of us. You know, we we came here with expectations, but I think we exceeded that. And with that, it you know the, the pressure mounted, and um, you know these players have really announced themselves. It, at the start, it was a Cricket Namibia story, you know, for our country, but it's become a global story where we've inspired, inspired not just our kids back home and, and young children, but I think globally we've, uh, we've really uh, won a lot of hearts. And um, it's, it's just congratulations to, to this team. The Super 12 for us, um, honestly, it's been, it's been an amazing experience. You know, it's, it's never nice to lose. Um, we, we don't take the field knowing that, you know, we, we're going to be blown over by, by another team. You know, we, we really want to compete. And I think we've, we've done ourselves uh, uh, proud to, to the, the way we've conducted ourselves on the, on the field, starting with, uh, you know, that first win against Scotland and then, you know, Afghanistan. And then I think the, the, the match of the, our best match was definitely against, against Pakistan. Um, you know, it was it, facing the best in the world at times can be, um, overwhelming um and you know it's it's all about staying composed and you know this team especially with the ball has shown that they are willing to wrestle they are willing to to hold on and compete like we have our last game against New Zealand 94 for four after 16 overs um so you know the learnings for us is something that we we are just going to treasure that we're going to hold on very tight to that because those lessons, good or bad, they, they're only going to make you a better team. They're going to make you a better player. And I'm very excited to revisit all those lessons when, uh, when we depart. Thank you. I can see that Anuj's question is that uh, the way that India's batters have been playing in the last few games, have you made any specific plans um, in order to nullify them and to make sure that Namibia end the campaign on a high? Um, look, we, we've analysed um, the, the Indian team. Um, you know, as players, you always look to to plan ahead of the, a game like that or any game. Uh, we, we know up front with a bat the way they play. You know, if you don't, if you're not going to execute your plans and and with that execute your skills, then you know they they will punish you. They, they, that's a guarantee. Um, we want to come uh, uh, finish this campaign on a high. Um, you, you know, it's been 45 days in this bubble. There, there are no excuses. Tomorrow's platform for any player, any player to face the best in the world is a platform where you should uh, treasure that moment. Um, you should be up for it. And there's no doubt this, that, that this team is going to be up for it. I think it's just important for, for us to, to play good competitive cricket. Uh, you know, we've played 40 over cricket uh, in this group. We have not been blown away by any team. Uh, in 10 overs or 12 overs or, or anything like that. We've been willing to, to stretch the game and to, to give ourselves a, a, a good chance against these type of opposition. Um, and, and tomorrow is just a classic uh, game where you go in 
and, and you need to own your, your, your role. Uh, you need to take brutal accountability for, for what you're going to bring for the team tomorrow. It's the last little push. And I say that because it's been a long tour and it's been an emotional roller coaster, to say the least. Okay, let's move to Prakash. Your question, please. Uh, Pierre, uh, a lot of the talk in the build-up to tomorrow's games, unfortunately for you guys, is about India and Afghanistan and NRR and New Zealand. So, how is your camp feeling at the moment? And, you know, like you said, you, you guys haven't been comprehensively beaten uh, like the other guys who come through to the Super 12. So, what constitutes, what, what are you looking forward to your team doing tomorrow particularly? Something that specifically you're looking forward to. Yeah, we need to be better in certain areas. And I think um, if you look at our, our last couple of games against quality batsmen, um, especially at the death, you know, we, we hold on for 80% of our innings with the ball. We scrap, we fight. But, um, you know, we've got, we've got to execute our, our plans at the death, uh, you know, in a little bit of a more brave way. You know, we've got plans. <laughs> we've got death plans. You know, we've got the skills. To, to, to hit the Yorker. We've trained it for two years. And I think, the, you know, for me, the bowlers just need to go back tomorrow to, to that area because it's an area where you're always going to be under the pump. You're always going to be under pressure. Uh, when a batsman, like, like like the type of batsman, when they come at you, you know, these bats, they're not going to let go. And if you're going to back off, um, they're going to make life very tough for you. And, and I think tomorrow, a, a big goal for us is to make sure that in the death, that we execute our plans, but we execute our skills with confidence because we we, we have been good uh, previously building up to the World Cup in the death. And that's that's an area where we want to be clinical, um, as well as maybe in you know up front with the bat in the power play. Is is you know, we, we talk about freedom and and you know play you know, play your game and stuff, but we also don't want to cause too much damage up front. You know, 30 for four, you're chasing the game and and it becomes hard to put something on the board or to chase anything. So there's a bit of a balance there, but there are definitely areas where we'll, we want to be uh, very good or, or improve. Um, and and for, from an extra point of view, for extras, bowlers, I think we, we should be right up there in terms of a, a, a clinical way that we've bowled from, from that perspective. Z Zaidi, please, your question. Uh, hi, uh, Pierre. You know, you talked. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your performance so far. You talked about sort of how the fans back home have been seeing you, and fans around the world have been seeing your team. One thing that struck me in this tournament is um, the respect that Namibia has earned from all the opposition, from all the teams you've played, um, and I saw that even most strikingly in the Pakistan game. Obviously, after the match, uh, you know, there were videos circulating on the internet when they came to your locker room, um, but also during the match, right? Obviously, respect for, for David because he plays in the country. He knows the Pakistani top bowlers and he was able to sort of uh, do well against them. But even for your other batsmen, for Craig, for Gerhard, how much does it mean to you and your team uh, who came in here, right, with a lot to prove? that um, there is no country in this tournament that is not taking you seriously when you get on the field. Yeah, thank you for, for the compliment. Uh, and, and I think you've summarized it uh, beautifully there, is that, you know, we, we are a team with a very strong, healthy culture. It's a culture that we started building three years ago. It, it didn't happen overnight. You know, our culture is all about pride. It's all about being selfless, uh, it's all about courage. Uh, and then the main one, it's all about uh, in, inspiration. Those four pillars are the pillars that, that's kept us breathing for the last three years, that kept us going. Uh, it, 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 it's also made us successful. And, and I believe that those um, values are the values that's made us good people. On and off the field, we respect um, opposition, we respect the game. And, and I, I believe that's why the opposition, uh, you know, they, they respect us. Um, they've all reached out, not just on the field or, or after games, but at hotels, um, you know, the Proteas, they've been amazing support for us. We shared the same hotel for a long period of time. 
And 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 I always said to the players uh, a couple of weeks ago when we qualified that last game against Ireland in Charger, I said to the players that you've now built yourself a very special reputation. And that reputation is something that you have created through living good values and believe in this culture and living this culture. And, um, and, and that reputation, you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't fall out the sky. Uh, that reputation came with extreme sacrifice that these guys have put in. You know, I, I say this over and over again, we've got, we've got 16, 17 players in our national team that we picked a team from. And what these guys have put in um, and what they have done in this World Cup for me is, is incredible. But it's also uh, something where we, we want to show the, the global world, a cricket world, that a small nation or uh, an associate country, they also belong. And that's how we feel. You know, that respect that the New Zealanders showed us the other night or day, the Pakistan team. You know, that makes you feel good. It makes you feel that you actually belong here and you're allowed to compete with these teams. And I want to thank these teams, you know, for reaching out to associate teams. There are a lot of associate teams out there that just need that little bit of comfort in and, and feeling wanted. And, and we certainly felt that. Thanks, Jim. Okay. Let's now move to Shruti Ravi, please, for your question. Yeah, my, my question is, um, so uh, among the standouts uh, for your team has uh, been the left-arm pacers. They've done uh, incredibly well, actually, uh, the likes of Trampleman and all. So um, uh, as uh, you're going into this game, uh, do you have any, uh, uh, can you say something about the whole uh, pace attack, especially the left-arm pace attack you have? Yeah, I, I, we've got a quite a unique bowling attack. We've got a few left arm seamers more more than usual that you can see. Then uh, David Visa is a right arm seamer, um, and uh, you know a guy like Ruben Trimpleman, he, he's really um, you know the way he's set himself up to to start that first over for me has been excellent. You know, it's that theory of that first punch um, that he's created as a bowler, um, and uh, the, you know. Who will forget that over against that first over against Scotland with three wickets? Um, all of a sudden, in in the space of six balls, that game is just on its back. And 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 Ruben has really worked hard. Um, you know, from a physical point of view, he's definitely definitely got some more ball speed in him. We're going to work on that. We're busy working on that physically. And I feel that, you know, against an Indian team, Rohit Sharma, those type of batters, you know. Obviously, there's going to be nerves, but don't change what's been that's been working for you. Um, the, you know, when you get the ball up there, it swings, and there's better energy on the ball. So don't change that. Um, excuse me. Um, and then the other seamers, you know, a guy like Jan Freilink is always in the background, just just doing the grubby work. Um, and if you look at where he is on on the the, the bowling list for this World Cup, you know, he's, he's there and there about, um, you know, he, he relies on skill. Um, he, he's, he's our little street fighter. You know, he will come and clean up if there's um, a, a big over the previous over. You know, he, he backs himself in the death. So, so our bowling attack, and with the experience of David Bissa, also with a new ball, he can get it to swing. Um, uh, you know, against India, you know, those, those first two, three overs is going to be critical for us to be on the button. Um, you, you know, we, we've shown that against Pakistan. We've had Pakistan in the power play 29 without loss. So, so we are capable of, of using that new ball with, with what we have in our bowling attack. Thanks very much. Just one final question from me, Pierre. I'm keen to understand, in terms of the bigger picture, what you are hoping the impact of your performances at the T20 World Cup will mean for development programs in Namibia and getting more bats and balls in the hands of, of children in the country and ultimately growing the sport to the population there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, our, our organisation with our CEO, Johan Miller, he, he's been... He's been very proactive the last year in 
um, developing the game in all regions in, in Namibia. You know, it's, you know, what we've done here in, in, at the World Cup just adds more financial support um, to, to keep on uh, taking these de development programs to the next level in Namibia to get bats and balls in hands uh, of young children and, and young girls, especially. Um, so, so I'm just glad that us as a national men's team could, could have contributed financially. Um, also, the way we've conducted ourselves as a team, you know, maybe a, a, an extra additional sponsor will knock on our door just because they like us, because the way we played or, uh, you know, we are respected in the, in the global cricketing world. But it's, it's contributed to the organization to, to say, listen, let's keep on growing this game. And, and I'm 100% convinced that it will be the case. It's already the case. So, you know, our, our CEO is quite dynamic and proactive in his approach with these with these things. And, um, you know, um, it's just been an, an amazing journey and it's given Namibia cricket and our development programs, our pathway, uh, everything, just a huge injection to say, let's, let's keep on growing. Now we've got a window of opportunity here to grow this game to the next level. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. I don't think we have any further questions from Zoom here. So that concludes the press conference. Thank you very much for your time and good luck for tomorrow. Thank you very much.